Um, if you were here for uh, Trade Mageddon Lecture 1 and or Trade Mageddon Lecture 2, what's happening over here? Give me one second. Why is my screen doing that? This is a... Uh, all right, there we go. Boom. So yeah, if you were here for Trade Mageddon Lecture 1 and or Trade Mageddon Lecture 2, um, y'all will recall I was making commentary about the analysis that we are giving with this particular course, right? Trade Mageddon is I wouldn't be surprised if it would be difficult to keep this type of content available online as the situation globally continues to heat up um, as the U S is posturing um, for kinetic war, right? So not a cold war, but posturing to actually, declare war um, on, on China, right? As the U.S. is posturing uh, to put U.S. boots on the ground, potentially in Ukraine and, and the situation with, um, with Russia. So as, as this nation is moving through this process and as it's working to build a war consensus nationally, one of the things that I stated in both lecture one and lecture two in the Trade Mageddon course is that what we saw during COVID in terms of the censorship pales in comparison to what we will see as this nation moves closer and closer to a bona fide declaration of war. Right. And, you know, as Malcolm always states that, you know, history is best qualified to reward all research. So the reason why I kept, beating that drum is because I want for us to understand where we are situated and located at this moment. And I want for us to be able to just to see clearly and have the ability to identify risk and opportunities that exist within this moment. But the most important thing, you know, if you have clarity, you definitely want to lock in with a group of other folks who are like-minded and seriousness and serious and understand the magnitude of the situation that we find ourselves in. This is incredibly important because this isn't a scenario or a time where we as African people or black people in the Western world should be navigating as individuals or navigating alone. It makes us very, very vulnerable. So I actually want to, I want to play this clip really quick, just as a, as a refresher, if you weren't here and you didn't catch it, I want to just play it. Just give me one second. Let me take the mute off. I don't know if I can make it any larger. Do it this way. Hold on one second. Do it like that. Marketing, right? That's using the tools that this digital world gives us and allows you to reach broader audiences, right? Although a lot of that is going to be cut, cut off in, in, in the days ahead. It's going to get harder and harder, especially as we enter into this new age of McCarthyism, right? If you, if you thought, if you thought that it was difficult, right? If you thought it was difficult to speak out against the pandemic, right? During the shutdown, if you thought it was difficult to, to, to offer content online that went against the state narrative, then wait until the war heat up. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't got to study history. Look back at McCarthyism. So yeah, wait, wait until the war heat up because you, what, what I referred to as, uh, putting together disparate facts and drawing insights from based upon historical, political, spiritual, and cultural insight, right? What they, what, what the, what the, what the companies refer to that as is conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me just I'm not going to play the full clip um, if you so choose uh, you can feel free to actually check out lecture one and lecture two if you haven't done so already but I just wanted to, to go back on that as a refresher because I want us all to understand that the that in this environment in this heightened wartime environment the stakes are much higher right so whereas though um during the pandemic, you know, the, the, the social media companies and, you know, mainstream media was responding by what was responding by censoring certain accounts and 
they were responding by creating so-called conspiracy theory po- conspiracy theory policies. So if you uh, will put something online that's a, potentially a so-called conspiracy theory related to either the vaccines or the COVID-19, you know, you could get your whole channel removed or you could get your whole account um, taken down. Right. And there have been people. Uh, specifically on Twitter that have had their accounts removed and they actually sued Twitter and successfully won their lawsuits, right? Because basically everything during the pandemic that they were saying, hey, is disinformation or misinformation or uh, 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 conspiracy theory, much of that stuff was proven to be factual, right? But we understand the the politicization of information and hotly contested environments, right? So I'm I'm sharing this with you. And the reason why I wanted to make that comparison is because with COVID, the most you might risk is having your platform removed, right? Being silenced in that way. But with this situation with the war, and if you are giving an analysis on the war to help people understand like what's happening, and your analysis does not align with uh, the state approved (laughs) messaging points, like you risk a lot more than just having your platform removed, right? You risk literally, you know, having them people show up on your door to take your temperature. So we have to be very, very careful in this moment um, because we don't want to get distracted from the work. And we also want to be aware of what's going on. You understand what I'm saying? So just using wisdom, using insight, there's going to be a lot of people online. Like I said, when we did a trade Magetton lecture too, there were a million people having conversations about bricks and now they're talking about the war. Most of it is just noise, right? Most of it you can probably ignore because it's just a content strategy. People have to, it's just like CNN, right? With CNN, they have to talk about whatever, you know, in the news, right? And so that's typically what you see online. People are just talking about whatever the rumor mill or the mainstream mill is pumping out for the day. So most of the ticks that you'll hear are just noise, you know, and you probably shouldn't be listening to it anyway. But I just want us to be aware that This is a very, very real situation, right? Because two things that the United States government or this nation in general has never had an appetite for are truth and justice, right? We, we, we have to understand that, that this, our history, right? Our sojourn as a people within the divided States of America has validated and proven to us over and over again, that this nation does not have an appetite for justice and or truth. 